Hello YouTube, I'm Ryan from the Reptile Guys and we're back again with a new episode titled How to Train Your Lizard. I've had several requests on this topic and I thought I'd share my four neat tips and tricks on taming your lizard. So let's get right into it. Now I couldn't think of any better lizard to star for this film than my alligator lizard. Now if you guys haven't met uh, her before, this is my adult female southern alligator lizard Angel and she will perfectly fit this uh, video because she is one of the most iconic uh, lizards in the pet trade known for their bad temperament. Now that doesn't quite apply to all lizards but as far as alligator lizards, wild ones, it really does. Now the first thing you need to consider when training your lizard is one, is a wild caught or captive bred. And two, you need to realize what kind of lizard it is. Now, alligator lizards uh, represent the meanest of the mean, the, the worst of the worst. On a scale of 1 to 10, they'd be the 10 for most ill-tempered lizard. So that's where you need to put your standards. And then keep in mind this video will be oriented around this lizard in general. So, now let's start off with uh, Angel herself. So she was uh, caught as a uh, juvenile in the wild and her temperament was pretty spectacular and unique for an alligator lizard. She wouldn't bite and she wouldn't poop slash or musk. Uh, most lizards would threaten to drop their tails by wiggling the tip of them back and forth a lot like this, uh, threatening to drop it and bite and poop and musk and you know, just all the nasty stuff basically trying to make you regret ever messing with them. Now, taming these lizards takes time. You really need to understand that this is not going to be an overnight thing. You really have to put in the time and effort to do my four steps which are pretty successful uh, to tame your lizard. Now the first step I, I'd like to talk about is handling. Handling is probably the biggest issue right now. You are more than likely watching this video thinking, well I have the meanest lizard in the world. I want to hold him without him biting me or trying to run away. How do I do that? Well, I'll tell you. Handle him some more. <laughs> if you want to tame your lizard, you, you have to handle it. You have to get it used to you. You have to uh, become a, a, uh, a daily presence in its life something it recognizes. Uh, if you are just, you know, an every once in a while thing to your wild lizard or captive bred really, it's gonna just, you know, go back to its, you know, evil little killer dinosaur instincts and just want to bite you and be mean. But if you're, you're holding them all the time and showing it that you're not a threat and it doesn't have to, you know, revert to instincts to run away or, you know, bite you, then you'll probably be successful. Now this takes time, like I said. You're gonna have to do this daily, you know, a few times a day in fact, at least with alligator lizards. You're gonna wanna hold them all the time because if you don't hold them all the time, you know, they're just, like I said, they're just gonna be a mean little dinosaur. So, that 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 pretty much covers um, step one, just handling. Get, get become in, uh, a, 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 a presence in its life. Yeah, I can't think of the word, I'm sorry, but just a, a something it recognizes, it's not afraid of. Now, uh, step two is time. Now, I kind of referred to this in the last step, but time is the biggest issue. Like I said, not an overnight thing. You're really going to have to put the time and effort to tame your lizard, and you can't expect much of it. I mean, honestly, the best, you, I mean, not all lizards are the same. The, for your in particular lizard, the best scenario for you could be it just might not bite you anymore, but it could still poop and run. Or it won't drop its tail. I mean, all lizards are different, but I mean, I think our all our all around common goal is to have your lizard just be a sweet and gentle, you know, creature that's just happy to be alive and happy to be in your hand. So, uh, I, that pretty much covers topic two. And by the way, I, I have these written down because I, uh, I keep forgetting and I've been remaking this video for a while now. So, alright, step three is how to prevent the uh, all the you know variables the biting the pooping and the dropping the tail so to prevent the uh, you know these you know, scenarios I uh, I have my personal um, techniques so I'll share them with you so with alligator lizards the main concern about them is 
pooping, biting, and tail. That's the three main things they do. So biting is probably the number one thing. You don't want your lizard to be biting people. I, per I personally prefer my lizard to not bite over all three of those things. So to prevent biting, when you're handling your lizard, don't allow it to bite you. You know, just, you know, when you're handling it and it's trying to bite you, it might have its mouth gaping open. Just get, you know, not a strong grip, not a mean one, not, not forcibly, not hurting it, just something where it's not going to jerk its head around and bite you. So if you do that, then, you know, it's going to get out of its head that it, it doesn't have the option to bite you. And then, you know, over time, you know, after like an hour or so, it might calm down. You can slowly loosen your grip and then it'll just sit in your hand, possibly. And uh, that can also work to prevent running. So uh, to prevent, let's go down to, uh, oh yeah, yeah, let's continue on biting. So the technique I used was give them something or something to bite. If they absolutely are trying to bite you and they are going to die if they don't bite you, try uh, letting it bite something. Some, not something that'll hurt it, and not something cruel, but like like a leaf, for example. I find um, the uh, jade plant leaves, they're, they're kind of like a, a plump like leaf, and they, the lizard bites into it. It's very like um, soft. It doesn't hurt them, and they can just bite right into it. I assume it doesn't taste good because they, they let go, and they stop biting afterwards. And, you know, lizards I've had in the past, they, they won't bite at all after just because they're so afraid of that, you know, that terrible taste, I assume. Uh, of you know happening again if they bite and that just they'll, they'll remember that and just make sure if you're gonna do a leaf don't don't pick out anything like you know poisonous or something that could you know harm the lizard just you know an innocent little leaf that can bite onto and hang if it wants to or I mean something else even like a cotton ball it'll just learn that there's no satisfaction of biting a cotton ball you're just gonna continue to hold it and it, it'll stop eventually it's just gonna bite onto the cotton ball and or leaf, you know, and just let go soonly after just because, you know, it realizes it's not you. And I found that, you know, pretty, uh, pretty, a pretty good technique. So, uh, now down to the tail. Well, the tail is their number one thing. If you don't know what, um, tail regeneration is in lizards, is they can drop off their tail and it will, you know, squirm around. And they do that to fool, um, a you know predator that it's that the tail is a lizard and the lizard can you know run away from its uh, loose tail and just you know book it and just get out of there and then the tail will be eaten or whatever then the lizard can regenerate it but personally many people don't like a regenerated tail it's almost like a defect a regenerated tail see the original tail is made of bone the spine you know goes all the way down into in its bone but the regenerated tail is cartilage and not only that but the scale pattern will be different it won't have any color it'll be gray at least on alligator lizards and uh, there won't be any function of it they'll just kinda be there to store fat kinda like the main tail did but it won't be prehensile anymore which is unique to alligator lizards their tails are prehensile and I personally love this tail it, it makes the alligator lizards whole because they're such long lizards and their regenerative tail will never be as long as the original now Angel is 15 inches long and I I, uh, I I am very prideful of owning an alligator lizard with this tail because it's very rare to find a wild one with it so to keep this tail <laughs> Don't touch it. Just don't touch it. There's no point because the alligator lizard, or lizard, it can't just, you know, drop the tail by itself. It actually has to be pulled off. They can't, you know, take it off themselves. They really can't. So unless you pull on it, it won't come off. They can threaten you with it, like I was saying, and wiggle the tip of it really, really fast and to threaten that they might drop it. But, um, that's just... I mean, you know, big deal. If that's the case, then just don't touch the tail. And, you know, once they're more used to you, then after, uh, you know, enough training, then they, they just will be comfortable with you handling them, and they might not threaten the tail at all, and it won't be a problem. But even when it isn't a problem, still I recommend be very careful with your tail if you want the lizard to keep it. And, and as well, it's very stressful and hard on a lizard to regenerate tail. It takes so much energy out of them, and... It, it's just very hard on the lizard for it to regenerate that entire tail. So, uh, next up is poop. Well, that's kind of uh, a fact of life when it comes to lizards. When they get scared, they poop. And alligator lizards in particular, they will open up their... In well, here, let, me, let me show you. It's called the vent. It's not like, you know, their butt or anything. It's actually called the vent. It's right there. And they will open that all the way up. You'll see, like, the 
pink stuff and in males you will see their male parts and they will try to musk you which is musk is basically a uh, a liquid that stinks very bad it's, it's not pee but it's it's very bad and then they will pee and poop as well and it's just very nasty now if you want to prevent that I recommend if they do it regardless you know make sure it doesn't drip inside or anything or on you and if it does just wash your hands but uh, once they get it all out, I mean, they're, they don't have unlimited stuff, so once they're out, they're out. But they'll continue to keep their vent open and try to wipe you with it, and they will do that. But if you want to prevent that, I found a humane, uh, unharmful way to do that is get an ice cube from your freezer, and you can just put that on the vent, the open vent. Now it's, you know, skin in there. It's, you know, tender little pink skin. And if you put an ice cube on that, it's cold. They don't, I, I assume they don't like that very much. And they close their vent right away. And that puts in their mind, well, next time I open my vent and, you know, you know, waste all my uh, stuff on my uh, handler, uh, it's going to be cold. And, and I don't like cold things because I'm a little dinosaur. So... They, that I found that to work in the past. So you know, ice cube on the vent will usually calm them down, and you know they'll close it. And in time, they won't do it anymore. So that is a, uh, another technique for you guys. Now uh, I I have one more technique, but it's not written down. Uh, this technique is uh, really it, it really is for um, wild lizards alone because. I guess it could apply to captive breads if you're going to capture them in your tank. It's all about how to pick them up. Picking your lizard up is going to predict the next, you know, 15 minutes or so of its attitude until it comes back down. Just like a human, if you stress it out, it's going to be stressed and it takes time to cool down. So, to prevent that, you have to pick them up nicely. In the wild, uh, catching them, well, unlike picking them up in their tank, catching them lasts a little bit longer than 15 minutes. It lasts months. So, you know, if you're going to catch them, I suggest trapping them and not actually picking them up when you catch them. Just trap them in like a little thing. Don't let them poop or bite or anything. Just, you know, get them like, you know, have them like accidentally crawl into a tub or something, pick them up, and then you can transfer them to your aquarium if you do decide to um, keep a uh, wild lizard. Now, catching them in a the tank, uh, picking them up, well, a wild lizard is going to run and poop and you know try to bite you and hiss at you and it'll be very nasty but I just recommend doing it as, as quick as possible as you can. The less the lizard is scurrying around, running around trying to run from you, the better. If you can get it you know and just just get it real quickly then uh, you know less stress and it won't be running around and then I think that will be a good scenario to start off good. Start, as far as time, this lizard in particular took about a month to calm down, but like I said, she's very well tempered and unique to any other alligator lizard I've ever dealt with, but uh, most alligator lizards probably maybe uh, two months or so, probably just a little bit more than that. But yeah, that's all I got for you guys on training lizards, alligator lizards in particular. I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, longer video on training your lizards because I have had a lot of information and feel free to skip you know through this thing or go back uh, to find more information because uh, I, I think this is some good stuff for you guys. Now I'll update you guys on the channel real quick. Uh, I will be getting a new additions, a few new additions and I, uh, I'll leave it to a surprise and I'll make um, private videos for those and stay tuned for that and stay tuned for reptile room august 2016 part two because that will be coming out spoiler alert and yeah take it easy make sure to like sub share perfect see ya